Is it just me or is everyone currently obsessed with this palette? This is the new etherealized palette from Makeup by Mario and it's just such a likable color story. So as you can see, I've already gotten the look on and I'm gonna be showing y'all not just the palette but also a full face of Makeup by Mario products talking through the things that are my favorites or my less favorites, but we have a lot to talk about with this palette. I'm gonna be swatching things against it and I'll be sharing maybe some of the initial misgivings that I had based on expectation versus reality of this palette. But I know what y'all are thinking. Khaki, I don't wanna talk about the eyeshadow palette. Tell me about those earrings. <laughs> this portion of today's video is happily sponsored by our good friends over at Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is my personal favorite jewelry company. Company. I wear their jewelry every single day and in every single one of my videos, if you hadn't noticed. Not just because they're carbon neutral, they use only recycled gold, all their plating is done in-house, but also the jewelry is beautiful and high quality. I have had some of this stuff for years. It is now approaching the middle of November. It's a really good time if you haven't already to start thinking about some holiday gifts. And if you're stumped, might I invite you to think about the thing that always fits, jewelry. <laughs> Gold jewelry. They also have sterling now. It's all so beautiful and I love shopping on there because as y'all know I am kind of a shapeshifter with my style. I love to be able to personify different vibes on any given day and I feel like their jewelry really allows that. So I want to share with y'all a few pieces that I just got. They're all earrings this month. I got these gorgeous thin hoops right here and they're actually really light. They're not that like hollow plastic gold, you know? I just think that they look really pretty, but I don't really notice wearing them. And then if I'm wanting to feel even more fancy, I got these bigger ones. I'll put one in on each side so you can see the comparison. So I've always worn my dangly earrings underneath my plugs and I've never had any trouble with these. They're, again, they're not super duper heavy. They're not uncomfortable at all. So there's kind of the more sleek hoop and then there's the more bold hoop. They're just super shiny and high quality looking. They're not that kind of like costume gold look and they're so beautiful. And then the last ones that I have are these. So pretty, so pretty. So it is a great time to start thinking about holiday gifting and they're running a sale on site right now, 25% off site-wide for the month of November. So there has never been a better time to go ahead and get your holiday shopping done early for all of the gold lovers in your life. I invite you to go check it out, not just for others, but maybe also for yourself. These are impressive, beautiful, and affordable because all of the jewelry starts at $39. So definitely click my link down below to shop and go get your 25% off and check some people off of your holiday gifting list. Thank you as always to Ana Luisa for partnering with me for this video and let's go ahead and get into the makeup. All right, so I'm gonna be starting off with the Rare Beauty Foundation. Makeup by Mario does not currently have a complexion product that I know of, right? <laughs> Either way, this is the Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer in the shade 14W. I already had a little bit of this on. This is the Sikapair. Dr. Jart Tiger Grass Color Correcting Treatment. I have been really enjoying it because it makes it so that I don't have to wear quite as much makeup, you know? Even if I'm trying to cover a bunch of stuff, that just does a lot of color correcting for me, gets me most of the way there. It makes me feel like I don't have to. I don't have like a bunch of stuff I need to fix, you know? That's why I like this particular skin tint is just because it's this really, really pretty kind of luminizing texture on the skin. Plus it's hydrating. I have a brand new tube that Thrive sent me of their concealer here. I also got the Thrive, the new reformulation of their CC cream in 130, which is a much better shade for me. So we'll be integrating that into a video sometime soon. That's a really stiff freaking sponge. <laughs> All right, let us commence with actual Makeup by Mario products now. So I have like every bronzer product <laughs> that Makeup by Mario has ever made. This is still the OG, it's so pretty. Why fix what ain't broke? I'm going to go in, this is the Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick. I just love the shade light from him anyway. If you're complected like me, you could just go in with this thing. It is such a good shade and it's such a good formula. And I'm using a BK106 for this. It's a really great creamy formula. You get a ton of product for your money. It's 10.5 grams in here. Wild, especially if you're building a makeup artist kit or something. It's just a really great value. I feel like his colors are always on point and it just juices the skin up. Look at that. Honestly, I might just go in with all of the bronzer products today. <laughs> I do have all of them. And the differences between them are, 
I want to say they're subtle, but they're not really. So there is this one and it is just like a pure cream. It's almost just like painting on the skin, right? And it's going to give you that color and a really creamy texture, very consistent, but it doesn't have any like shimmer to it. It doesn't have any reflection to it. And the skin enhancer is also a cream, but it is a lot less pigment. It's almost like a balm, you know, whereas the other one is a cream. There's the one in the compact on the top and then there's the one on the stick underneath it. Same color, very different formulas. Actually, I think I'm gonna skip that one today because it is so balmy and I do plan on powdering and I just don't want everything to gum up. And then the two powder bronzers that he has, one is called the Skin Perfector and then the other one is just a regular, this is just his regular, uh, you know, powder bronzer. I have to say I prefer the powder bronzer. <laughs> it's just a much easier to work with formula and it's a very very pretty color whereas this one has the same I want to say like the same formula almost the same color in it but it also has this line of a shimmery more like golden bronzer and then a highlighter it only really works when you mix them all three together the first time that I tried it I, I messed it up and I ended up with like stripes of silver on my face and I just prefer knowing exactly what's about to happen. But I do feel like this kind of is so little pigment that when you do put it on with like a very fluffy brush, it'll sort of just accentuate the contours on your skin without, you know, having to be really precise about it. I'm gonna go ahead and powder with my House Labs powder because I like it very, very much. Put that underneath my eyes. This is a BK108. I really should memorize them, but there are so many. I love this too, because even though it's giving me a really good amount of like lack of reflection <laughs> on my skin, it still has a beautiful luminosity to it. It gives you like angel skin and it's not pink. All right, let's do this. I feel like I have a score to settle. I swirled, <laughs> I swirled because I am hell bent on not having it do that silvery thing on me, but I don't mind a little luminosity because we're not going with a ton of coverage today. I don't feel like it's gonna be super obvious, but I'm being quite quite tenuous with it. And that's just gonna set the bronzer a little bit so that we can do some blushing and whatnot. So pretty. I love that it's very light, like light in shade. I can apply a lot of it and I don't ever feel like it's going orange on me. I'm using the matte one too. Can't stop, won't stop. Pretty. So I have here, Creamy Peach, and this is just the powder. I also have some of his sticks, the creams of his blushes, and I like those as well. But this one has always been near and dear to me because it's actually the singular shade of the KKW by Mario blush that I bought that I was so excited about and the formula was so difficult to use. It was so like chalky and over pigmented that I'm just really satisfied with this one. It makes me so happy. So yeah, I was actually curious to see how this swatched against the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow and Coral because I just got it and I have a feeling they're pretty similar. They complement each other. This is the Makeup by Mario one and it's gonna be richer, more coral. And then this one's odd, oddly, you know, since it's called coral, it's actually more peach. The peach one's more coral and the coral one's more peach, but pretty darn similar. So I might use a little bit of this one. Me. They are quite lovely together. Especially as I usually work with a lot of cool tones on my skin. Peach actually makes everything just look a lot healthier. I think Mario knows that. <laughs> we are in need of some contour. He doesn't have a proper contour as far as I know. And the one that I've been loving is actually the one from the film star Bronze and Glow from Charlotte Tilbury. I keep saying this, but I like that I can kind of use it to shorten my forehead a little and it never looks muddy because it's a little bit warmer than a lot of them that I have. But I find that contour makes a huge difference in not ending up with pink face. Let's talk about this eyeshadow palette. So again, this is the Ethereal Eyes eyeshadow palette. It is $65, I think, and it just came out. There's a reason that me and all of my YouTube besties that are complected like me are excited about this. It's just because these are very, very easy shades to work with when you're fair to medium neutral, complected, because you're gonna be able to get a believable shadow here, believable brightness here. You're gonna get that warmth that comes towards you, but relative coolness that's not muddiness. And then he not only gave us these beautiful, like celestial textures and some very pretty satins, but also, and y'all should have seen my face, the first time that I reached in this because this one's actually a cream. <laughs> I went, <"Whoa." laughs> 
because it's just, it's disconcertingly soft, like quicksand soft. I mean, it is so gelatinous and weird. I can hardly describe it to you. I don't really understand why, because it's, I mean, it's pretty, but it looks just like the other Celestials. It's just very, very strange. Like when you touch it, it goes, it gives a sploosh feeling like a squish and it's, it's super, super strange, but I don't hate it. You know, I'm not mad at it. It's just an odd choice as far as I'm concerned. But these Celestials, y'all know I love a good Celestial or like a wet look. That's what a lot of people call them now, but I call them Celestials because I just think that they look sparkly like the sky. And that's what Wayne Goss calls them. I pulled his pearl palette, rip the pearl palette. I'm not sure if it's ever coming back. All of his other stuff stays in stock, but this one never does. And to me, that was like, Someone said it and it just rung true to me and it never really left my brain, but like how, how utterly similar these are. Look at that. Look how similar they are in concept, in execution. I'm gonna swatch all these real quick and then I'll also swatch the Wayne Goss ones next to it. I hope you don't mind some left-handed swatches because that's what you're getting on my right hand. That's just the way nature works. So the Wayne Goss ones, as I'm swatching them, I notice how much sheerer they are. It's a bridal palette, you know, that's what he described it as. And so this goes on in these really even washes. And that's not to say that it's a weak palette, but it is a little bit more, it's just a little bit more sheer in its formula. Now, I have one thing that I immediately noticed as soon as I started using the new makeup by Mario, and that is, I just don't think that this is the same formula and I haven't done all the research. You know, I could go in there and look at the ingredient lists and stuff like that, but I really wanted to get an impression as if I were just a regular makeup user, you know? And I have grown to love his formulas and that's what motivated me to buy this. I shouldn't have to go and look and see if like the formula is exactly the same. I wanna trust him, you know? But these mattes especially do not feel like a regular Make It By Mario matte. I have the Four Play Everyday Quad right here. Okay, I'll swatch that too. <laughs> Why not? And I love these mattes. I love them so much because they have this unique grip to them. And I was hoping that this was gonna feel like an extension of that. And these don't. They're like not very emollient. And so they kind of kick up in a way that is almost like a pressed pigment, but whatever the opposite end of the spectrum would be from like a Hindash pressed pigment, you know? Cause they're quite pigmented, but they just go fluff like crazy. And it's kind of hard to get them to pick up on a brush without kind of going everywhere. And I've waxed so poetic about it on my channel in the past, just how much I think his matte formula is just so good on his eyeshadows that I feel almost guilty for assuming that they would be the same and kind of recommending this blindly during the Sephora sale. Maybe I should have tried to know and understand better whether it was the same formula because I just don't think that it is. And then I have two of his crystal reflectors here. I have quartz and bronzite that I thought I would swatch next door. I am so underwhelmed by these. I'm sorry. Like, I know that they went viral on TikTok. I don't really see the appeal. They don't give wet look at all. They don't do Fenty Diamond Bomb on my skin. I regret decluttering that. I think I might buy that one again. <laughs> all right, let's prime. Because when I used this the first couple of times, I just found it kind of just a little bit disappointing in the payoff. And so I'm gonna use some of my Kaleidos Tone Activator. This has been quickly becoming my favorite eye primer because she's so grippy. Grippy, grippy, grippy. That just really camouflages the world of sins. Yes, it does. I like that primer very, very much. Okay, so knowing what I know about the mattes and how they tend to be a little bit difficult to control, I'm going to proceed with a little bit of caution, but I do wanna push the limits and see what kind of drama I can get out of these deeper tones today because I feel like that's gonna really tell whether this palette is a flop or not, you know? So I'm gonna start with, actually I'm gonna start warm-ish, neutral-ish. Okay, that's a very valuable, look at, look. And that's not the worst thing in the world. Like I know that we used to be so phobic, honestly, <laughs> of like dusty shadows, but it kicks up quite a lot. And I'm just kind of tapping. Not a ton of payoff. And I didn't tap my brush off that time because I wanna try and get results because I'm, I'm like trusting this primer because I know this primer works really nicely. 
but I feel like I have to buff a lot to try and get them to stick and like that's kind of aggravating. It already feels like this is like trying to stick something dry to something dry, but very smooth, you know? It's really, really pretty and smooth. And I'll take the lightest shade here, lightest matte and just outline. Make sure that it's nice and blended. And it does remind me of a pressed pigment again in the same way that the Hindash stuff does where it's like, it's incredibly blurring. I'm gonna start with this gorgeous brown right here, bedroom eyes moment, and I'm gonna put that all over my eyelid because it's just a fail safe for me. It's just a very, very easy way to achieve something beautiful. And then we can work on top of that with some of the Celestials, but I haven't gotten to do this yet. And this is just one of my favorite kinds of looks on my eyes. A really like soft, almost like daytime smoky eye. I'm gonna grab that on a brush. This is a BK something. It's a BK207. Grab a little bit of that and just make sure we get it everywhere that my finger can't go, you know? And we're still preserving a good bit of that sheen. I like this shade, but it is the only one in the palette that is this finish. Going underneath my eyes with that shade as well. And if y'all are ever looking for a cheat sheet on this look, this eye look, I have a short called the Bedroom Eyes Tutorial. I'm gonna take this BK203 and I'm gonna grab a little bit of the darkest shade, the darkest matte. And I'm gonna just try and gently place that on the outer V here and up into the crease just a little bit. And I would use something really fluffy, but I feel like I need a little more control with this formula. I'll like place it and then I'll go in and blend it. Taking a little bit of warmth here, this shade, and working that on top of where my veins kind of show through and pulling it down here so that I don't have quite as like exaggerated of a socket. All right, so there are, like I said, two Celestials. One is gonna be this kind of warmer gold and then the other one's gonna be this really pretty kind of cool taupe that shifts a bunch of different colors and it's my favorite, it's my favorite one. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna just tap it and then I'll smooth it a little bit too. I don't know though, that's kind of worth it. It's giving a little bit of smoky quartz from Charlotte Tilbury, so I wanted to swatch those next to each other just to show y'all. Here's smoky quartz in the pop shots, and then here is the kind of metallic uh, pewter shade from the Makeup by Mario palette, and then there is the kind of taupe celestial wet look that I have on right now. So they're different, but I feel like you can achieve this with this palette. I just kind of put like this one and then this one, and that one kind of gives the same thing as the pop shot. You know what I mean? So it's like brown with that one on top is very similar to the pop shot. Pretty much, it's just one shadow, you know? So I dig that. I think it's pretty, but like, I'm really trying to get like sexy, sexy from this. <laughs> I know it sounds really, really sexy to say it like that, but I'm gonna take a little bit more brown. This one's a little warmer. And I'm just gonna kind of try and build a little bit more blur right in the inner corner here. And pull that out and up a little. This has been easier. I think the primer made a big difference. I'm very, like, I was just initially very disconcerted by how, like, how much they kicked up in the pan because it's just not what I expect from a Makeup by Mario shadow. But I did want to give him the benefit of the doubt because I feel like he knows what he's doing. And it's not that he's not allowed to innovate, you know? 
I just had expectations going in. Okay, I'm gonna do my brows and my mascara and my eyeliner and stuff. We'll just zoom through that and then we'll do lips and then we will chat about all this stuff. convinced myself <laughs> because this has become the confluence of everything that I love about my Kaja orange blossom bento, the brown in there, the combo of like Revlon chocolate, the cream shadow with that Charlotte Tilbury pop shot in Smoky Quartz. It's giving me bedroom eyes just like on steroids and I have not felt this pretty in eyeshadow in a really long time. Like, I just, I almost just like didn't want to trust it because I saw how much it was kicking up in the pan. I will say, I don't understand how he did it because when you're putting it on, where is that shadow going? Okay, because it's not stamping onto the skin and you can see it fluffing up on the brush, but it's not falling out. Where is it going? <laughs> because I don't have fallout, you know? Like I would expect to have had to clean up or something. I didn't, you know, powder that intensely that it's just like shedding off of my eyes. I don't know, I don't know where the fluffing of the shadow went, but I will say, I don't blame me for being a little disconcerted by the fluffing initially because I was like, this is the sign typically of like a lot of fallout. But I mean, the proof is in the pudding. This is why you play the game. I mean, look at this. Look at this, look at it, look at it. Okay, so yeah, I, I owe Mario a bit of an apology because my initial misgivings were just that, initial. They were premature. Okay, I'm gonna throw on a lip here. We're gonna go with the Makeup by Mario Mauve Glow. I can't stop looking at my eyelids. Whew, love it. And that's going to plump my lips a little bit over the next few minutes, but I had this moment where I thought for a second, I was like, wait a second, Amanda bought me the Moon Dust Eyeshadow from Urban Decay in Lithium, and I'm so glad that she did because I almost like can't even tell the difference right now. Okay, so this is Lithium. It's a little more green, but like from afar, are you really gonna know the difference? That's Lithium. This is the Charlotte Tilbury one that we just swatched the, um, Smoky Quartz. And then that is what I have on my eyes right now, which is the satin brown from this palette with a little bit of the really awesome kind of celestial here. That's like a taupe shift, slightly blue. So to me, it's always valuable information to see those things next to each other because A, this could solve it if you've been contemplating any of those singles, but if that's what you're excited about in this palette and you already own those singles, you might not be that thrilled with this palette because it's going to be a duplication of your efforts. Do you know what I mean? Clearly one of my favorite finishes on my eyes. It makes me really, really happy and it makes me feel really pretty. He's managed to really achieve it and do a great job of it, but it is not completely undupable. Okay, let's give me a little spritz here. And we will go read up on this. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna read up on this because I wanna understand where his head was at and make sure that I'm giving this its due. Oh gosh, $68, $68. Description, 
Mario's Dream Palette and his 12 new signature shades create effortless ethereal eye looks featuring three unique finishes, suede mattes, natural metallics, and a glossy shimmer. This anniversary edition palette is Mario's artistic vision come to life. Suede mattes offer enhanced grip. I'm wondering if my eyes are just really, really dry <laughs> and maybe that's why I'm not getting the grip but I don't feel the grip that I got excited about in the Foreplay Everyday Quad, where it was like I felt it grip my finger. This doesn't really do that. Suede mattes offer enhanced grip for rich color. Natural metallics feature micronized pigments for a seamless application, and glossy shimmers are infused with pearls coated with emollient binders to impart a reflective wet light shine on lids. I wanna talk about the ingredients here. Yes, yes. Okay, so his Master Matte has some polymers in it. I'm not an expert in these kinds of things, but I do recognize when something, you know, has like polymer on the end of it or cone on the end of it, that it's going to be some kind of like silicone or like emulsifier or a wax or something like that. You know what I mean? The fact that like we've got mica talc, zinc stearate, boron nitride, silica, those are like the first handful of ingredients and almost like half the ingredients in the new matte formula. And those are just like dry, dry, dry. Like silica, that's a drying agent. That to me says like, okay, it's not my imagination that these feel drier. I'm not complaining, but it's definitely different. And if you are counting on it being the original one, it's not which I think is a strange choice for it being an anniversary palette. You would think that he would want to kind of celebrate where he's been. I mean, it's new, you know, which good for him, you know, good for him. So before I give you all my final thoughts on this, I want to start by just unpacking my expectations. My expectations when I saw this mainly hinged on the fact that when I saw this color story, all of my sirens went off in my brain of like, yes, this is a color story that's going to look great on my skin. Then my brain went to, I like Mario's previous formulas. I know I can trust like his instincts and his textures and whatever. And so I felt very confident paying $68 for this. This is the kind of thing that regardless of having a channel reviewing anything, like this is a palette that I would own and pan on my own based on the color story. That said, we come into reviews like that with like sky high expectations, sometimes unfairly so, because they can be so specific that it's not binary of good or bad. They can be an expectation of this is going to be exactly how I expect it to be. And I made a mistake of not really allowing for Mario to iterate and transform his idea of his own formulas and it still be just as good. So. I was initially a little disappointed because I felt like these formulas just are, they're very, very different. To me, it's a little bit more like a Hindash shadow, but it behaves kind of like when you touch the brush into it, it behaves like an Anastasia shadow where you think there's gonna be a lot of fallout. And again, I do not understand where the fallout went. Where did it go? Because it could have fallen out and it didn't. And I don't know how to explain that to y'all. That just seems like it defied physics. <laughs> it goes to the credit of the formula. Like it's just a new formula to me and it took me a second to get my head around it. I think if you are expecting it to perform more like his older mattes, just use a concealer, you know, or something a little bit grippy a primer on your eyes and it will make all of the difference in the world and how it goes on. But even if you don't, it's going to work. We've talked a lot today about the mats, but that's because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mats in a 12 pan eyeshadow palette. More than half of them are matte, so I feel like it was worth spending that time on this because obviously we're trying to decide whether this is worth your money, right? But the other appeal here is those textured shadows. And it's funny that he says that there are only three textures in here because I'm detect detecting four. Like, or at least, honestly, I mean, hmm. This one feels different from this one. Feels different from those two. Definitely feels different from this funky putty. I don't know. It feels like it is self-aware. It's a funky, funky, funky formula. I, I don't really understand. It goes squish. It's so strange. It's so strange. Yeah, that one's weird. <laughs> But nonetheless, the textures, oh, these textured shadows, they're just, they're just kind of everything, especially like my bedroom eyes look that makes me feel the absolute prettiest in the world. Like 
this is that. This is that palette. Like it's gonna give me this, it's gonna give me these, it's gonna give me warmth, it's gonna give me coolness, it's gonna give me matte, it's gonna give me texture. And I can play with all these different finishes and just much like the rest of his collection, you can play in this color story where everything feels very skin native, but you can just ever so slightly dial up or dial down the coolness or the warmth or the texture, what have you, and get a lot of subtly different looks from it. So yeah, I think that this can be an everyday palette easily because there are so many mattes in it and the qualities of the textured shadows do not immediately go full glam. You can get something beautiful and subtle and wearable all the way up to something really beautiful and glitzy out of this. I feel like it's almost the Wayne Goss Pearl palette just with the volume turned up. So yeah, expectation versus reality. I did not get exactly what I expected, but I'm glad that I trusted the vision and he convinced me. He convinced me and I think that the more that I put this on and especially as I was like putting my eyeliner on and putting my mascara on and seeing the look come together before my eyes, I realized I can't wait to use this palette again. Like that was just what washed over my brain. It was like, I'm going to be picking this up every opportunity that I get because the colors are just so pretty. I think that it's different for a reason. I like it very much and as you can tell, it's, it's super pretty. <laughs> it's just super pretty. I think it would make an incredible holiday gift for someone because it's an extremely easy color story to like. It is. It's just very, very likable. It's exciting. It's giving you all of the, you know, ethereal magpie goodness, but it's also giving you a bunch of really pretty, like I said, just like tans and neutrals and things like that to play with. I have seen some people duping it and I do not deny that this is a color story that can be duped elsewhere. We just did it. But I think it makes a lot of sense as an anniversary palette in terms of the color story and the textures. It's just those mattes I got a little hung up on for a second. I hope y'all enjoyed this and I hope that this satisfied all of your concerns. And if this look entices you, don't forget, one of the biggest parts of it is just some really gorgeous shiny gold jewelry. So definitely click the link down below to check out all the new stuff for the holidays from Ana Luisa. If you made it all the way to the end, you probably want to subscribe if you haven't already, and you probably want to check out the next video because you're going to anyway. I will pop one right here that I picked out for you. I hope you'll have an awesome day. I love you, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.